I'm going to put up a poll right now. Give me a second. If you guys want to just type in one, two, or three in the chat to register your vote, it's a perfect way to start um, the conversation today. Uh, and and j j just to kind of give you explanation on what the question is, if you had a, a, a full list of players from NFL on today's slate um, and you wanted to cut it down, say, from 800 players to 100 players, how would you go by doing that? Would you use a projection threshold, meaning everyone under five projected points you'd eliminate? Would you use a value threshold, anyone under a one value you eliminate? Height, bro, you 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 think that's okay? Okay, so do you remember? Do you remember back in the day when everyone was in love with the Bales books for the first time? And I think in one of the Bales books there were uh, there was some sort of correlation of height to touchdown. Touchdown uh, equity, I think it was, or something like that. How likely someone is to score a touchdown because of their height? I you th you oh, wait, whatever it was. Uh, sounds funny, but I think that was that that used to be a thing for a little while. I don't know, man. I think that used to be a thing. I'm confused. What is the difference between projection and value? Say what now? Point per dollar. Hello. Uh, Golden Tate at 15 when he's priced 6K or uh, Russell Shepard at 12 when he's uh, 3K. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> so value is point per dollar. If you guys can just type in a number. Okay. And then by the way, by the way, for those that are uh, voting three, what is, and voting other, what is your other? So just state randomly, you know, state it in the chat if you would like. Um, I mentioned this because I think this is, um a big thing for me i'll show you guys how i do it i think this is huge but um i think it's a combination of a couple things my answer to this if i were to pick one uh i don't think the answer is on the board by the way uh if i were to pick one i think you guys are correct i think one maybe threshold is the right way to do it right i think th uh, a projection threshold would be the right way to do it i think but i'll explain to you why that isn't the answer you guys picked both choices that you were supposed to pick anyway uh i i don't know where these projections are from i have no idea i did this last year i i have no idea what i was doing and i was testing things out and these are not my projections um so so for those of you that said projection threshold you'll say something like um i don't know uh just pick a random number i'm gonna put 10 so we're at even okay anything under 10 you would leave out right You'd be like, oh, these guys aren't worth playing. I am going to leave out. That way I can have everyone projected 10 or over. And then my pool could be a nice, you know, 10 or 100 players or 90 players or whatever. I say this is wrong because, and, and I'm going to get into groups just a tad bit here for a second. So bear with me. If you guys aren't familiar with groups, you will be by tomorrow. Don't worry. Um, how this works is if I, if I, if I take out everyone under 10, some stacks cuz how it works is and I'm trying to I'm trying to explain this the best that I can again sorry uh we don't have anything everything's brand new perfect uh, I'm trying to explain this the best that I can um if I have a group say um uh, again I'll just go Matt Ryan and company right uh and and whatever I'm just quickly going to do this if I have Julio I have uh, Ridley and say Freeman, uh, and I say uh, choose at least two of these guys, right? Um, and we'll leave it there. Then I create a new group of, uh, was Josh Allen starting since week one? I don't think so. Um, who's another bad quarterback? Give me a bad quarterback, Blake Bortles. All right, cool. So I'll go Blake Bortles. Um, who was on this team? Did DD play from the beginning? Uh, DD Westbrook. Um, did Keelan Cole or something? I have an idea. Here, tip, pro tip, pro tip from, uh, is it Jack? Cool. So you type in the abbreviation for, for the team and you'll see everyone here. So you can hold shift and you could put in Moncrief. You can put in Lee. You can put in, uh, I think we have everyone. Uh, I think uh, Leonard Fournette. Okay. And anyway, um, 
You could hold in shift and you could just add them all. Um, yeah, jack space, whatever. Uh, this group, if I were to leave this right here, Lee was out. It doesn't matter who was out or in. That's not the point of this. Just, just leave it the way it is. Um, the point of this is almost all of these guys are over 10. Almost none of these guys are over 10. And you could see it by going to D.D. Westbrook. He's 4. Uh, Moncrief, he's 6.9. Uh, Marquise Lee, someone said he was out. He didn't play, correct? And then Leonard Fournette is the only one. So if I were to just randomly say in position stacks, QB with at least two players of RB, wide receiver, tight end, you'd actually get zero Jacksonville. And no matter how bad you think Jacksonville is going to be, uh, if you are playing large field tournaments, there's a percentage chance, right? Probably not big enough, but there's a percentage chance. Now, you do this for the whole league and... It's going to be really tough to keep everyone on an even playing field, right? So what happens is your stacks are going to be, I wouldn't say one-sided, but are going to favor a couple teams because now we can't play Jacksonville, even if you were supposed to have them one, two, three, four, five percent or whatever it is, right? So, um, and, and I'll leave that there. So if you're saying blindly under 10, everyone's out, that's kind of wrong. Um, and then the same thing kind of with value threshold, even though value threshold, I, I don't know where you'd cap because value for NFL players isn't high to begin with. So you'd have to cap at something really, you know, low for you to make that happen. For me, uh, I, I just don't think I get there. Like what, am I going to cap at 1.4 or something? I, I, I don't know. So, so here's my nugget to you guys and how Manny Laura, uh, does his player pool while i am doing groups right why <laughs> this is incredible here watch this i just love doing this because just no reason actually no i'm not i i actually don't want to have them all on one screen um so while i'm making my groups and i'm going to go back to uh the same jacksonville uh thing i am going to key blake bortles and I'm going to add, just for the sake of this example, I know these guys didn't play, but I'm just I'm just going to go through it, right? Um, I'm going to put Keelan Cole, Fournette, Didi Westbrook, and I think that's it. Cool. So I would have something like this, right, to begin with. Um, I would then say Marquise Lee is out. He's not playing. Austin Safarian Jenkins, I'd look and be like, all right, well, 7.9 actually seems like a pretty decent projection relative, and the key word here is relative, to everyone else, right? To everyone else. Keelan Cole, 7, okay, that's pretty decent. Leonard Fournette, obviously going to stay in. I don't think Moncrief has a nice, a uh, uh, big enough one. I 6.9 maybe. Didi Westbrook for sure, no, right? So all of a sudden, even though it's, sub 10 for other teams it might be sub 12 for the saints or whatever it is you know um for jacksonville you can't treat them the same i'm gonna put it to i'm gonna give you this example so you guys understand uh even better when you have uh jacksonville must play at least one player and then for the same group that we made last time matt ryan sorry for my caps uh and then you key him and then put julio Fournette isn't a pad. That's that's another stream, kid. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get ahead of yourself, please. I'm not trying to confuse people right now. Uh, and then uh, now supposedly he is. So I don't know. Uh, you can argue that. Um, and then I don't know. I'm just going to add Sanu, Hooper. Um, and then I say that I want to play at least three of this guy, of these guys, right? Now, what happens is, and you guys have to understand how an optimizer works for this, right? I, I've talked about this a ton. It's if those two were the only two teams on the slate and I was forcing all my lineups to be stacks, which stacks, even though these guys are projected for 30 more points than Jacksonville, who do you think is going to be in my lineups more? Whoever answered Jacksonville is correct, right? That's because I have less players value takes over correct why because since you only have to force one person in a stack here and all your fillers can then be optimized by the optimizer to pick the the highest projected combos 
you are going to have more Jacksonville than you do, you know, Atlanta. So think about that when you make your pool and when you take out people from the equation. And there's a pretty good example in this week, right? I think the example was the Tampa Bay example. If you were making your Tampa groups or you were trying to eliminate people from Tampa, uh, at the time, I think it was still Fitzpatrick to Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson, whoever was in the backfield, and OJ Howard, right? That was your that was your little trio here. If you were to pick a random projection and eliminate downwards, you would there's no way you're gonna get Deshaun Jackson, but that is wrong considering he is the second receiver or was the second receiver on the team, right? So think about the word relative when you start eliminating people from your player pool. If you would have set all your settings, how I will eventually teach you, you would have not gotten any of these guys if you were to limit your player pool the way you guys seem to think it happens. Uh, there's some guys I'm not willing to game stack. Again, we will get to that in the stacking stream. Uh, for those of you that saw it last year, you understand what I'm saying. There's some guys that are not going to be in my groups that I'm not eliminating from my pool. There's some guys that are not in my pool or not in my groups because I'm eliminating completely. So, uh, so then it seems like if you aren't playing bad players, there are some teams where there will not be viable groups. Um, Here's, 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 and, 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 and again, very, very good question. So this is all stuff I didn't think of when I planned for the stream, right? But, uh, of course, you guys asking just helps me understand a little bit better where you guys are at. The whole uh, don't play bad players thing isn't um, literally only have guys with insane projection, right? Because uh, that's, that's, that's not correct. Um, don't play bad players is... Matt Lacoste was a 20% owned player on a random week. He gave you the predictable zero that week. Seth Roberts, Cortland Sutton, Michael Gallup. Uh, Chris Conley in a live final was chalk. Uh, all these guys not just are bad players. They are almost not even their number twos. Chris Conley is still a number three. You know what I mean? Like, You remember Blake Jarwin? Oh my gosh. This is what I mean by bad players. Guys that whether you whether you reduce your pool relatively to the team or you pick a projection threshold or you pick a value, they would never make the squad. But somehow DFS and Twitter has convinced you that this is chalk. Salary relief is the worst phrase in DFS. I never understood that, man. Play good players is exactly the same as, if you guys haven't noti noticed yet, is me saying, have a floor in fantasy. We're so enamored with upside, 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 upside that we go Blake Jarwin in order to fit in Julio. But Julio can give you 28 and you could get a fat zero from Jarwin. No joke, you can get a zero from Lacoste. It already happened. You know Julio can also have a bad game. Uh, when you turn on a game and you watch the game, right? Play the players that are going to be part of the game the most times. You know, for example, and this is where this is where Michael Gallup came from, right? I turn on a Dallas Cowboys game in the afternoon that's closing out the slate, and I should be looking for Zeke, Amari Cooper, and Dak. I should not be looking for Blake Jarwin because what happens is I have never seen Blake Jarwin really play until I just turned on the TV and I have him in my DFS lineup. So when Jeff Swain catches the ball and I am, uh, you know, touching the roof with my hands and clapping with my roof, my ceiling on the touchdown, only for then Troy Aikman to say, Jeff Swain, touchdown. You cry like a little baby on your couch. And you're, pr you're praying for that one catch for seven yards. That's going to give you 1.7 fantasy points. That is by far the worst feeling in DFS football. The thing I spend the most time on, and you guys know how much time I spend <laughs> making lineups. <laughs> uh, the time I spend the most on is actually crunching 
tweaking and then crunching again, tweaking and then crunching again, tweaking and then crunching again, tweaking, right? Uh, I'd have something like this. I'm not going to go to 150. I'd have something like this. And then I, I, I'd go to QBs, by the way, if you want to judge where your, your crunch is, by the way. I always do it with the QB tab. You're stacking every lineup. At least I hope you're stacking every lineup. Uh, QBs are the main part of your stack. So I just judge by the QB. If I were to judge by all 100 players that you will have in a given Sunday... Uh, you'd go insane. So I judge by QBs and then kind of see where everyone's at. There's always a QB when you first do this that is going to be way higher owned than everyone else. That usually means there's an error in your in your in your portfolio of lineups. And the error is not uh, I forgot to create a group or I forgot to create a stack or I for, I added an extra player or uh, they there's uh, two paired with a quarterback instead of three or that's not the error the error is there's an outlier of a player in your groups there's an outlier in your player or you haven't reduced the team enough in your pool limiting player pools is extremely important just uh, as the very basis of all your lineups. It is the most important part of don't play bad players. And you are going to hear that on my Sunday streams a bajillion of times. I feel like I should put a big sign at the top of the stream that says do not play bad players. And then on Sunday when you guys come in and say, Manny, 2v2, um, Danny Amendola and uh, Kenny Stills or Julio Jones and Ridley, I am going to insta-ban you. You won't even hear me trash talk you because you'd be insta-ban. I am on lineup study for NFL last year. And I am in the Millie Maker. I'm in the Millie Maker. Um, I'm going to go to a random team. A random, I'd say, uh, I think Chipotle is really good. Look, ma. Nothing's going to change. Here you go. Top on QB. Fitzpatrick, 20%. Deshaun Watson, 20%. Um, if you have someone at... Uh, and you can see here. If you have someone at... I'll just sort by quarterbacks. Fitzpatrick is 20%. 16% Watson. Stafford, 13 All the way down. If you have someone at 60%, you're doing something wrong. If you get an outlier, something something's wrong. So I just revisit everything, and it means a few things. I don't know. Start with limiting something, or you probably limited too much. So the person that alluded to limiting too much, that is a thing. That is that is real. That is real. You can you can limit too much. The bad receiver clip I posted. Yo, tell me no, dude. That's Russell Shepard, dude. God damn it. Tell me no, man. Don't lie to me, dude. Don't lie to me. Don't freaking lie to me, man. Every single person does that, dude. Real recognize real, man. Real recognize real, dude. Tell me I'm not correct. Damn it, that's Russell Shepard, dude. Damn it. <laughs> Russell Shepard. We all played Sterling Shepard. But Russell Shepard scored. Dude, that's my favorite, man. Again, just a few pointers every time I... I, I Because I've run into a million errors while doing this. I've made a bunch of mistakes while doing this. I'll save you guys the time. I'll save you guys the mistakes. I'll save you guys everything. There will be times where there's you're going to do this wrong. So uh, I love it that we're doing this this week, by the way, because... I love that we have our, our, our NFL week this week because... You will make mistakes. You, 100% you're going to make mistakes. I made mistakes. Everyone, when you first start, you're going to make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. The same way where you, you start playing poker, you learn the game at an expert level, or you think you do, and then you get to the table and you make a ton of mistakes. It's going to happen. On Fantasy Cruncher Rewind, so FC Rewind, which is free. This is absolutely free. All we do is give free. Boys and girls, it's free. It's free. I can't reiterate enough. Watching the stream is free. Live is free. Uh, 
Going to FC, clicking the rewind button is free. So that means you can get to use re uh, Fantasy Cruncher for a slate that already happened for free. Go in there. Go to week one. Go to week two. Go to week three and week four. Do a month of slates, right? And pretend, start from a, get a blank canvas. Um, I don't know where you can find projections. You can use the same ones that are on FC. I'll tell you that right now. By the way, uh, R, R squared last year, if you're looking at accuracy projection, FC was fourth. For the, for someone was asking at the very beginning of the stream. Um, get in there, use it, and practice a slate exactly how you would do it on September 8th coming up. Practice week one, two, three, and four. Trust me, you're going to make mistakes. And I say this all the time, and th this is more my Sunday vibe. Have Grab the slate by the horns and just dominate it, dude. Do whatever you want with it, right? Know the ins and outs of the slate like it's the back of your hand, dude. But I don't mean news, right? I don't mean reread Evan Silva's article seven times and spend eight and a half hours doing it. That's not what I mean. Uh, what I mean is make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lineups before then, before you get to Sunday, so you see how everything's playing out, right? So you see all types of scenarios playing out. If there's one injury or two injury risks that are going to happen Sunday morning, which you should have before lock, play them out both. Um, there's so much time in between slates that you should not be having any dilemmas come Sunday morning. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You should be like, yup, I already knew what was going to happen. I already knew what was going to happen. And again, if you guys remember Sunday streams from last year, that's exactly how it was. Something broke at 1130. What did I tell you, chat? What's going to happen? I show you my exposures. Look at how I had it. Brand new, baby. You have to do some of these things. So, um, And then, of course, if something like that happens, you go back into your groups, your player pool, whatever, and adjust accordingly. Just a brief recap. If you got here late, uh, and just to kind of end the stream on this note, if you got here late, uh, projection threshold, probably not the best value threshold. Definitely not the best. Uh, other is a fine answer. Just what is other other for me would be relative to the team. You have to remember to keep everyone on an even playing field. Um, if not, the optimizer is going to favor one team or a couple teams way heavier than it would favor everyone on an even playing field, right? Make sure if, if you're running big game stacks, you have similar amounts of players from every game so that it could choose from whatever game it wants. No bias, just block it out, block it out, man. Don't be a fan of your team um, and want to play Sterling Shepard with no golden tape because you just love your Giants and you want to root for someone on Sunday with your friends. It, it's all about making money and if it's not going to make you money, don't do it. Kind of hard to block out what Fitzmagic did. Ah, it's very easy to block out what Fitzmagic did. If you didn't catch it yesterday, FC is now uh, offering uh, FC Lite packages. So you can't pony up the 60 bucks. I know it's a lot, man. Not everyone's a, a big money baller like uh, Poopa Loop and chat, right? We all don't have 100K bankrolls. If you have, if you play 100 bucks per month, 200 bucks per month, and you rather have... Uh, if you, I don't know, you rather have a, a $5 a week thing and it's much easier for you to justify, FC Lite would be uh, a much better option for you. That came out yesterday. Uh, so get in there. Finally, an option for you low stakes players. I think you guys would enjoy that. Uh, we want to give to everyone. We, fair, we, we, we thought bankrolls are a thing. Um, and with all the subscriptions in the world out there costing 60 bucks or more per the, oh, per the season is ridiculous. Um, we found an FC light version, giving everyone an equal fair chance to get the best optimizer in the game. So.